I need to just check what am I doing right now okay hello it is a rainy and very lazy Sunday so I thought I will sit down knit for a while and also talk about what are the costs of maintaining a house like ours and what are the biggest challenges of having an old house like this these two questions i got from you guys and i'm very happy for all the kind commentary and i wish that you keep on sending all the questions to me because that way i also know what you are interested in and also we can get to know each other a little bit better first uh, i just want to reintroduce myself I'm Nina and I live in this big old house in southern Finland. It is uh, estimated that this house is built somewhere in between 1681 and 1696. The history of the house is quite interesting and I'm hoping that I can find uh, a little bit more material like picture wise that I can show you. As you can guess, uh, finding uh, any photographs uh, that are even 100 years old is hard. In order for us to talk about what are the costs of maintaining a house like this, um, it's probably good to know some uh, general specifications. This is built with the uh, logs, the insulation, the uh, materials they are mostly clay linen wood wool um, in some parts there's even moss that was widely used uh, back in the days so it is all natural materials that can last for a lifetime if they are well taken care of the total size of our house is 365 square meters divided in two floors the upstairs uh, there's two rooms that were used by the maids uh, and one of them is now my husband's office that he uses when it's a little bit warmer but uh, and the other room is just a guest room that nobody actually ever sleeps in. The rest of it, it's just uh, open, empty attic st space that we need to restore and renovate still. But because there is plenty of space downstairs too, so we are not in any big hurry with that. The first winters when we lived here, we heated up the whole downstairs. But now this winter with the electricity prices going up, uh, we decided to try out and just stay in half of the house and we are heating up approximately 70 square meters of space. So this library room and our kitchen and bathroom. Um, still, <laughs> uh, it is more space than we had in our previous apartment we lived in when we were living in the city. Our property is about two hectares, of which around one hectare is a wildlife protection area. And this year, uh, uh, you know, this maintenance program starts, which is part of a national scheme to protect uh, all these natural rural biotopes. The area we have here is uh, a grazed woodland, a meadow, in danger of disappearing altogether if you don't do something about it. Now uh, to the question, which was that what are the costs of maintaining an uh, old house like this? The main cost is definitely our energy and electricity bill, which is approximately 220 euros per month, which is broken down into so 170 euros is the energy bill and then we pay 50 euros for this transfer cost so it's for the operator for the grid that they have built probably what's more 
interesting and important to know is not how much does it cost, but uh, how much do we consume. Our monthly consumption is around 600 kilowatts per hour, meaning it's approximately 7,200 kilowatts a year. We could reduce that. We do have, for example, storage uh, that could work as a fridge. But we have these energy saving appliances which are not costing too much to have on. Now I need to make this so I can continue scissors. These are these Fiskars scissors for kids with Pikkumy. There's a scissor in every drawer, I think. <laughs> so then next up, water. We are connected to a municipal water network. We don't have our own well, um, but our water consumption is minimal, much less than uh, average household consu consumes. Uh, basically because we have a waterless toilet, it's a eco toilet that saves us a ton of money. Also, uh, we are harvesting rainwater for our garden and uh, ducks. That means that uh, what we use here is basically dishwasher, washer and dryer and shower drinking this type of things but when you have appliances that uh, are have this ecological mode I don't know what it's called but uh, they are built so that they use the least amount of water that you can uh, that way it saves us a lot uh, our water consumption is 20 euros a month that means it's six cubic meters of water uh, monthly or 72 cubic meters per year. Another cost is uh, yearly cost, uh, property taxes. We pay 340 euros each year, property tax. Um, the tax depends on what type of house you have, how big it is, when it is built, everything. But for this one, it's uh, 340 euros. Then uh, probably the most important of all the all the expenses is insurance. We have this extensive full value insurance so it was important for us to um, get the insurance for the full value of the house because there are a lot of things that are priceless that you cannot get back once they are gone uh, or you would have to wait another 300 years for it to get the same patina or feel that it has and after electricity water property tax insurance we just have uh, a yearly chimney sweeper <laughs> that comes here uh, and goes through all of our seven fireplaces. It costs us uh, 120 euros a year. Then we pay 20 euros per year for road maintenance and upkeep. So when it comes to other costs like of repair and that type of maintenance, it is a very hard thing to put a price on it because um, obviously we do a lot of the work ourselves and then the materials we use yes they are um, at times pricier than what you would probably get from your um, basic hardware store but if you think about how long they last they actually are cheaper which leads us to another question uh, that i got from you is that what are your biggest challenges of having a big old house like yours? Um, we feel like there's not um, too many challenges that we couldn't tackle. Um, 
for example, heating up the house, it's not a challenge more than it is maybe, you know, a task like brushing your teeth. You just get a habit of doing it. But maybe uh, I was talking with my husband, maybe one challenge is that if we need professional help, there's a real struggle of finding, you know, the professional craftsmen that still know how to fix old houses like this. Um, there are, but they are super busy. <laughs> There's not uh, enough of them to go around for everybody. So, we, for example, we were waiting uh, for a year and a half for a stonemason guy to come and uh, do our uh, natural stone stairs that leads up to the house. Yeah, other than that, I don't think there's any big challenges at all. They are like old houses like these are fairly simple constructions. Um, there's no, uh, you know, computer systems uh, that are, that we need to take care of or update any software for it to function, it's more this physical work <laughs> that it requires. And often uh, those are things that you can uh, do by yourself if you don't know how to do them. Fairly simple to learn how to fix them. So uh, now you know our basic expenses of maintaining a house like this. If there's something else you'd like to know, then like before, leave me a comment below so I can see them and I try to answer them either there or in a video like this. Um, but uh, now I think I'm gonna continue with my knitting uh, and wish you a very very good day. Moi moi!